dehydration multi fruit plant project and orange juice processing plant to be set up in Amravati, says Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis. FTI students to meet INB Secretary in Delhi on Tuesday for further talks. And Air India shifts all its operations to swanking T2 Mumbai Airport. Thank you, Mark. Good evening and welcome to Metro Scan from Mumbai. I am Amta Bhatt. Now the news in details. Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis said dehydration multi fruit plant project will be set up in Wadu and orange juice processing plant will be started in Morshi. He was speaking at inaugural function of National Agriculture and Orange Festival at Wadu in the Amravati district. He further said tax on liquor and cigarette will help to cope up with the drought situation. He also criticized Congress saying that they are responsible for farmers' splint and this cannot change in one year. The second round of meeting between striking FDI students and officials of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting was concluded today. After the meeting, students said that they will meet INB Secretary in Delhi on Tuesday. They have informed that the consultation process is still, but strike will continue until the issue gets resolved. Air India shifted its operations to T2 starting today. Air India CMD Ashwini Lohani said, as the airline is shifting to a swanking new terminal, it will provide passenger with great experience. He added that human resource is the biggest challenge before them. This move also helped in improving on the time performance and passenger convenience. Pankaj Srivastava, director commercial Air India said, T2 will be an opportunity to integrate the service and likely to AI service. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, now uh, Air India operations are shifting to T2. How will this step help the cash trap airlines? Oh, well, uh, it gives an opportunity for us to uh, synergize our domestic and international operation, which was uh, happening from two different terminals till now. And the transfers between the domestic to international and international to domestic uh, was uh, kind of a nightmare because passengers used to go almost five kilometers serpentine road with connecting the two terminals. Now that is uh, all thing of the past and what we look now is uh, integrated operations out of this terminal uh, giving huge uh, passenger convenience uh, uh, for connections. And once such kind of connections are put in place, uh, we would see much larger numbers using Mumbai Airport. Uh, connecting to various parts of India and also from various parts of India to the rest of the world. So, give us a sense, uh, uh, it's uh, read, uh, it said that domestic uh, operations are shifting to T2. So, can we say now all the operations uh, a passenger will find in T2 and everything will be, uh, f uh, will be found in T2? Yes, of course, we have moved out of uh, the old terminal lock, stock and barrel. So, as far as Air India is concerned, we will have no operations from the old terminal. Our, all our operations, be it international, be it domestic, would be from this terminal. Also, when we're talking about T2, we know the lavishness and everything. It is uh, kind of expensive. So, will a customer, will a passenger have to shell out more from his pocket? Well, no. Uh, as far as the passenger is concerned, I don't think so. He has to shell out anything more. Except for uh, maybe, I don't know, if he is coming by taxi, how much the taxi okay. well, uh, will charge additional to bring him to T2. But uh, I don't think so. Uh, but there would definitely be a little more outgo from the on the part of the airlines. But we are uh, we are very sure that uh, we will be able to uh, overcome that additional uh, expenditure by way of increased number of passengers using Air India. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, how will this change the passenger experience? And also, any new services you're planning? Uh, uh, anything in the pipeline? Well, uh, we have just announced, you must be knowing, a uh, non-stop service uh, between Delhi and San Francisco. Uh, that is going to be the longest flight ever, uh, taking almost about 16 hours to reach the other side of the uh, IT hub. Uh, that's one flight which we will commence from 2nd of December. And besides that, uh, our uh, network 
planning is always on and as and when we get more resource we would be connecting more and more teams worldwide all right thank you very much for talking thank to you. us sir so definitely air india connecting uh, to the world and uh, now they are changing their operations to t2 will definitely give a passenger a new experience with camera person gorav this is shama mishra for dd news mumbai Researchers from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research have led multi-institutional efforts in search of India's first astronomy satellite, AstroSat, that was launched on 28 September by the Indian Space Research Organisation from Sri Hari Kota. TIFR have made significant contribution to the design, fabrication, and development of three out of five payloads that are on board AstroSat. Celebrating the successful launch of AstroSat, TIFR had organized a press conference where the team managers, along with other scientists from the astronomy department, shared their views and experiences while working on the project. The three payloads built in by TIFR for AstroSat are the large area xenon proportional counters, a soft X-ray telescope, and cadmium zinc telluride imaginer.